Oh man, Discord can't catch a break. Every time I'm gonna do one of these videos, I'm like, hey kitten, you want to know how to be careful on Discord? Ladies and gentlemen, Discord is a place where, um, you know, gamers convene, you know, files get shared, and everyone has a good time. And it just can't catch a break. Discord malware is a persistent and growing threat, warn Sophos. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, you can't you can't just throw one of those up there. <laughs> oh, come on now, that's too much. Now listen, Discord is popular, okay? And because something gets popular, it develops the it starts to gain the attention of like terrible like hacker individuals out there wanting to steal every little bit of your data. Now that being said, this isn't Discord's fault. This really isn't anybody's fault, okay? It's simply it's going to happen. If it wasn't Discord, it would have been something else, okay? Now ladies and gentlemen, this video is intended to sort of protect you and sort of let you understand the dangers you get into if you don't keep your internet like, you know, condom enabled, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, Discord reading this one right over here, Sophos mentions that malware detections over the past couple of months have grown by almost 140 times what it was for the same period last year. So it's, it's a growing, ladies and gents. Once files are uploaded to Discord, they can persist indefinitely unless reported or deleted, which, okay, yeah, that's probably any, like, file sharing service out there. Now, of course, they noticed that the types of malware that litter the cloud storage, which, by the way, if you don't know, Discord uses a content delivery network, like basically any larger tool. In layman's terms, when you're sending files to your friends in Japan, you upload to the Discord CDN, it then routes the file over to your Japanese friends. That's kind of how it works, okay? It allows you to share files back and forth. Now, on this cloud storage, Sophos found a bunch of game cheating tools, okay? Now, we saw this last time. Basically, people are sharing around hacks for games like Warzone, Apex Legends, and listen, if you're a computer if you're a video game hacker, God, do I despise you. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I still don't think you deserve to have your computer goat seed, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how this kind of stuff kind of works. Now, this is a Discord graph, okay? So if this is a Discord CDN, these are all the various executable files that are that are on the Discord CDN with, with, with shady malware. So for instance, Modern Warfare Bot Lobby, <laughs> rar. <laughs> and then you've got snowfidit.exe, I don't know what that is, man. It could be, that could be the wildest. Xdane Yonitim Systemi, so some standard file and some other thing. Here Here's a, here's a little bit of a Mac malware. Too. I think that's a DM. Oh, it's an image file, a DocuSign file, a Mac image file. They're going after Mac users too. Poor little Mac gamers. What have they done wrong? Come on now. Now, that all said, though, let's go look at some case examples. Now, in the magical world of Discord rats, uh, GitHub is an amazing place to go down to because people are just sort of storing these for free available. So this is one where it's like, this program uses the Discord net library to rat, remote access Trojan, your victim's computer. You can control it in a Discord server and is undetected by 95% of antiviruses. So if you click on their virus total, um... I don't know, that looks a little bit larger than 95%. You're kind of fucking with me, dog. But then you go down over here and you can see that they've got programs, like they've got little commands for get Chrome passwords, get file, send message box. And these are examples of the whole thing, right? But they did say, do not use this to give someone a virus. If you do, I'm not responsible. <laughs> I love the disclaimers, they're the best part. This code is really bad and probably half of it copied from Stack. At least they're honest, man. At least they're all honest. I gotta, gotta bless them. Now this is Discord Rat V2. This was actually uploaded like six days ago, oh, four months ago or something, Jesus. Now here they said for educational use only, the author will not be held responsible for any misuse of the tool. Now these are just Python scripts that you can get going and running. And if you look at some of them, they basically have abilities to, you know, change the wallpaper. Uh, retrieve the clipboard content. So basically every time you copy paste, you put this thing into, you put that data into a clipboard and you can get it. Then they have some creepy shit like geolocate, which is locate using latitude and longitude of the IP address, right? So getting your general location. Then they've got volume max, and then they've got a key logger, so and then the dumping of the key log. So again, key logging or actual keyboard in this case. Now again, to run these, you have to basically create a Discord bot. And I guess the best example for it is if you go to Discord right here, which uh, basically you can just set it and get it going. And as long as you can, you know, give it administrator privileges, you can then run these Python scripts. It'll create a new server with this infected bot onto it. Now I haven't really been getting this going because these Python scripts are actually kind of really old and I really couldn't get them working. And uh, honestly, they're not really that crazy and impressive because at the end 
end of the day, you know, it's it's just there are, there are there are rats that people are using that are far more malicious, okay? So for instance, I made two accounts over here. I made two virtual machines, all right? If you know my channel, you know that I make VMs all the time. So here I've got uh, I've got two accounts open. I got Victim Vince, all right, who basically opens any file you send him. And then I got Infector Tom, who's a sick fuck. He's going to wave to Victim Vince, Vince just so that uh just so that, you know, Vince knows something bad's a coming. Now, here I've got a remote access Trojan tool. I'm actually going to be censoring some names, but the point you have to understand is this is like a 2009 <laughs> remote access Trojan. It's most definitely already cataloged by massive vir like a virus, uh, antivirus software and operating system level antivirus as well. Seriously, trying to run this underneath Windows 10 will cause Windows' antivirus to freak out. So you effectively have to turn off the antivirus, at least on the server end. I don't know much about the uh, actual uh, victim end, you probably still have to. But the idea over here is once you open up this tool, you can basically, you get this nice little like window, right? So if you go to like new, you can actually see this is how a rat is generated. So here I'm generating the server. So I've got two IP addresses and no, you will not be able to hack me with these IP addresses. Why? These are local IP addresses. Every time I make a video like this, I keep getting a comment from somebody. It's like, Muda, you leaked the IP address. And I understand. Thank you for like being there to protect me if I leak anything. But I just want to reiterate, anytime you see 192 and 168, this is an internal IP. It will not do anything to somebody on the outside of my local network, okay? Unless it was like anything different than these two, like these six numbers, these six digits. If it was something like 42.33, yeah, then I'm fucked. Then I gave you my external IP address. Now, these are server IP addresses, okay? So when this server launches on the infected computer, it's going to start communicating to all these server IPs, right? You can have like multiple servers as far as these rats are considered. Now, of course, you can change boot methods. There's also anti-VM stuff. So let's say that we're running under a virtual machine VMware, you can actually set it so it's anti-virtual machine. It will not launch underneath the virtual machine. And the reason you, people do this is so that analysis can't be done. You can still bypass it if you want to, but that's a whole different story. Now, you've also got situations where you can activate, like, key loggers, and then you can have, like, stealth server options, so, like, hide files, delete on the execution, change creation, and then you've got persistence, and inject into default browser for whatever reason, right? Uncheck if you don't want the server and to inject into a process. So, again, injection basically means it's trying to inject itself using a different process to sort of mask as much as it can. Now, once you, once you actually have done that, you basically create a server. Now, in this case, I've called the server Sonic Hentai. It's an 83 kilobyte affair and all you have to do is just drag sonic hentai and send it over to the victim now of course it actually went through and the victim received sonic hentai but ladies and gentlemen you've got sonic hentai.exe right so all you have to do is download this shit and you save it to your computer and basically you run the tool. Now at this point, I've already run it. Okay, so now on this window, you can actually see very quickly that uh, this is what it looks like for the hacker. Now this is why rats are super scary and you need to watch out for them, okay? Because right now the infected system has no idea they have been infected. In fact, if you go into their task manager, for them, it looks like a standard computer anyways, okay? So nothing's really out of the ordinary for them, right? The computer's not doing anything. And again, this is a very, very like, known rat. There are newer rats out there that are better able to stealth themselves from anybody, and that's where it gets really scary. These files are being spread not just on Discord, no, 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 on every massive, like, you know, dis every massive distribution network. You could, you could find an infected file through email, through mega, through various file sharing services, and that's why you have to be careful when you run any program. Do not trust something somebody ever sent you, okay? You have to scan it multiple times. This is why I use virtual machines. If I do run code that I don't trust under a virtual machine, it's not going to do much. This virtual machine that's been infected is not going to be able to do anything uh, outside on the host system. So anyways, let's go back to the story. Here I've got two infected systems, right? Big Papa is the hacker system, like this one right here. Uh, I hacked the hacker hacked themselves, okay? Now, Innocent Steve is the infected one we just sent the Sonic Hentai to. So now when you right-click, you can see that there's a lot of things you can really do in this situation. One of the creepiest things is start capturing the desktop. So if we hit play over here and start capturing this dude's desktop, you can see that, god damn, 
we are seeing exactly what this character's up to. Now here you can actually see something really interesting, right? Because we injected ourselves into the Internet Explorer tool, right? Something right here. You can see that it suddenly spiked up in CPU and it's sending 1.5 megabytes of network traffic. See, this is a dead giveaway that the actual Internet Explorer tool that we've hit the server in is actually doing something. Now here you can see as we move this around, we're actually starting to get like a desktop capture. Yeah, it's choppy, but you know, it doesn't have to be the fastest, you know, cleanest thing you've ever seen. Now you can even increase the value of it to a hundred uh, to, to like, you know, just, just, to, just to get like a better quality. And then you can hit save images right here and the hacker will start actually saving various images. So bam, we can, you know, close the task manager and it reflects. Right here, you can see it right here. They've actually saved the target's images right here. And you can zoom in on them and you can see what the target has been up to. They're not the highest resolution in the world, but I guess it's enough for anybody. If you get hacked while you're browsing sensitive things like sensitive files, sensitive photos, maybe bank details, that just got grabbed by the person who ratted you, okay? Now, again, there's further things you can do. You can capture microphones. So let's right click and here we can set sample rates, hit play, and it should be capturing on the actual, yeah, you hear that? Okay, stop it, stop it. <laughs> See, it captured using the actual uh, Logitech webcam that I passed through. You can even capture the webcam if you wanted to. It doesn't really work in this system, but it's possible in newer rats, of course. Dude, you can even open web pages. So let's say I wanted to open up to like, uh, you know, Linus Tech Tips, for instance, right? So here I've got, you know, Linus's channel. I can hit OK. And on this system, it's already started to load up Linus's channel. So here I've got Linus's channel opened up on these web browsers and bam, you can open up pages to your heart's content. Now, if the hacker really wanted to freak you out with this rat tool, they could go into many things and start hiding your system tray icon. So if I hide it, it should actually hide itself over here. This should, like, already if somebody started seeing, like, a bunch of this, they'd be freaking out, dude. That's some black magic to people. Even as a file manager, these people can hack you and upload whatever they wanted. So here I'm connected to the desktop of this account. If I wanted to, say, upload this file called ghostdll, all I have to do is effectively just go in here and send a file. I can even create, I can, I can, I can even create a folder. I can say create a folder and type in you got hacked. Okay. And bam, it should just reflect itself on the action. Yeah. Right there. The folder just showed up. Then I refresh here, go to you got hacked and I can upload a file and I can upload this, whatever ghost that I have right here, this spooky, the spooky file, bam, it is sending itself over 1.2 megs. Bam. It's already here. So you can manipulate, you can do whatever you want. And this is a very old rat too. Newer rats that exist have far more dangerous capabilities on anyone's computer. Now, if you want to absolutely destroy Innocent Steve's will to will to use their computer, you can even send an actual command. In this case, we'll just shut down their system by sending the actual shutdown command. And bam, next thing you know, this is scaring whoever got infected. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what have we learned today? We've learned that Discord rats are in fact the problem. But I think more importantly is Discord gets that rap simply because it's one of the most popular services to be using. That said though, this necessarily isn't Discord's fault alone, since this kind of actual malware is spreading unchecked on every single platform you go to. So all in all, please stop downloading random things people send you because some of them could in fact be remote access Trojans. You've seen an example of what it looks like to be hacked and in the eyes of an actual hacker. The hacker in this case, even using this really old software, which by the way, runs relatively well on a system, enough to do some serious damage and serious file stealing. And in that case, you know, the actual person infected really doesn't know what's going on. And this system can exist even hiding itself from virtual machine technology and also running during startup. So if you do get infected by a rat, this is what the hacker is able to do. So really don't run anything. This has been a bit, uh, this has been of a bit of an educational romp throughout the entire mix, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, if you download random files that Infector Tom sends you or really anybody shady on Discord, you definitely open yourself up to a bit of a goatsy. That said, don't do it, don't download random things, and be careful with your computer security. That said, ladies and gentlemen, I got two virtual machines to take out to a nice sunset and end very peacefully. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.